Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and today we are going to talk about a Scandinavian Christmas by various authors. A fest festive tales for a Nordic Noel. So this is a, a compilation of short stories uh, of Nordic or Scandinavian authors such as Hans Harud was a Norwegian author of plays, poetry and stories. He was born into a rural family and many of his stories deal with peasant life while his later works were more urban in nature. Ingvar Amjorne <laughs> Ambjornens, I'm sorry, is a prize winning Norwegian author. His novel Brother i Blode, I'm sure is not how you pronounce it, but I can't do better, was made into a movie nominated for the 2001 Oscar for Best Foreign Film. Hans Christian Andersen was a Danish author of thousands of popular tales, many of them hunting stories, inspired by f uh, folklore and others that were in entirely original. Anderson's a fairy tale, The Brave Teen Soldier, was part of a 19th century wave of literature depicting a child's view of the adult world, including E.T.A., Hoffman's Nutcracker and the King of Mice, adapted into the Tchaikovsky Ballet, traditionally performed at Christian ta Christ Christmas time. Peter Christen has <laughs> I'm so sorry, really, God, was an Norwegian scholar and author who trained as zoologist. He collected Norwegian folklore with Georgian Engbretsen, Mo, and they jointly published folk, folk tales and legends. His portrait appears on the Norwegian 50 crown banknote. Vigis Ajurth was born in Oslo and is a popular and controversial author in Norway. Much of her writing is autobiographical. Several of her novels deal with contemporary women's search for identity. Karl of Knausgaard is a Norwegian author best known for a six-volume autobiographical novel my struggle. His work has been widely acclaimed and he is the founder of a publishing house called Pelikanen. Johan Kron was a Danish author. His book Peter's Christmas, first published in 1866, is a children's classic. Selma Lagerlof became the first female author to win the Nobel Prize for Liter Literature in 1909. A Swede, she worked as a teacher in a girls' secondary school where she owned her story storytelling gifts. O. E. Holvag was born a Norwegian, uh, in a Norwegian on a Norwegian island near the Arctic Circle. He migrated to the United States in 1896, settling first in South Dakota. His most fa famous book, Giants in the Earth, is a realistic novel about the experience of Scandinavian pioneers in the American Midwest. It was written in Norwegian and translated into English, inspiring an opera that won a 1951 Pulitzer Prize. 
Hjalmar Soderberg was a Swedish novelist, novelist, playwright, poet and journalist. His books feature melancholy and lovelorn characters in Fin de Siècle, Stockholm. I believe in the lust of the flesh and the incredible isolation of the soul remarks a figure in Soderbergh's most celebrated novel, Dr. Glass. Sacris Topelius was a Finnish author who wrote in Swedish. His works, including novels, short stories, lyric poems, and the libretto of the first Finnish opera ha have become part of Finnish national heritage. Ooh. <laughs> so here are the authors who stories are contained in this collection but what I can say is that um, my expectations for this book were I now understand a bit misplaced because I was expecting because by the title, Scandinavian Christmas, festive tales for a Nordic Noel. I thought this would um, be more regarded, regard, will be, will be regarding myths, spe specific cultural myths of Scandinavia, specific traditions or Christmas traditions in the countries of Scandinavia, fairy tales, should we call it like that, uh, that were told or that are famous in the Scandinavian countries. So, a lot about that, you know. But here, although you can find some uh, stories that are about um, specific uh, details and customs and uh, also nature in terms of the climate and the plants and the flowers that are seen there specifically uh, in that region. So those details are contained in some of the stories that are in this collection, so yes, but the majority of the, well, this is my opinion, of course, but the majority of the uh, of the stories, I thought them to be a bit, you know, common or usual or not thematic enough for what I was expecting, of course. Um, because I have to say, I didn't do my homework and I didn't go for uh, the Goodreads synopsis or anything because I thought that by the title, you know, it would be enough and I wanted to be surprised and I was really in a festive mood and I wanted it to be an opportunity to well, see with other eyes how people celebrate Christmas. But that's not what I found in here. So, I was a bit let down, I have to say. Um, but well, I'm going to talk about some stories that I really enjoyed. There weren't many. <laughs> but some, one of them in particular that is called The Fur Coat by Hadjalmar Soderberg from Sweden. Let me see if I can find it, yes. So this short story will talk about a man... Well, this reminded me of two other short stories. One from Tolstoy the death of Ivan Illich, and the other one for, from Gogol, 
how was it called the over the over cape or the overcoat or now i don't really remember the name but it has something something to do with their overcoat and well this is called a fur coat but here we have a couple that he's a, a medic a doctor and he believes that he is in his end of life not because he's old or anything but he thinks that there's not much long for him to live and he has a um, more rich, I think we can say, say it like that, a friend. And this doctor believes that his wife does not love him in the way that someone wants your spouse to love you, you know? So she is very materialistic and he thinks, the doctor, that she would bounce very qu quickly. So he's kind of doing these reflections and he recurs to this other friend, this friend of his uh, that is more well st established in life to in a way take care of his family so it's a very poignant story and i really enjoy this one of course you can say well that for christmas is a bit yes i know but that was the choice of the editor i don't know i think how can i explain this for me this is a collection of scandinavian authors a, a, collect, a, short collect, a short story collection of Scandinavian authors and then they call this a Scandinavian Christmas. You know what I mean? At least that's, that's the feeling that, I, that grew on me after I finished this book. So, okay. Then another one that I really enjoy was The Forest Witch by Johan Krom. So in this one we have two children going in a forest and so it's a boy and a girl and the boy is a bit younger and he's picking some flowers from the, um, the forest where they are passing by and then a woman appears and starts to like say mean things to, to them um, and threatening them uh, because they were destroying her garden or something and she threatens the, um, the children or at least threatens the young boy because was it was he who was picking the flowers that she will take him with her to be his prisoner but the girl said that it was her fault that they were admiring the flowers and she told him to pick up the flowers so please please take me you know and so the witch plots a plan and gets to an agreement with this little girl that after the summer is over and when all of the flowers are under the, the snow and it can't be any blooming flowers alive she would have to go with her and live with the witch and so the time passed and the little girl was becoming more and more anxious because the seasons were or the summer season was ending and then um, the winter season would be there in no time 
I'm not going to say how this the how this ends if she went with the witch or if she didn't so you have to read it but I quite enjoy this one and um, here they talk about the the ro a rose that is I'm supposing that is um, a Christmas rose exactly exactly uh, they talk about the Christmas rose that I'm supposing is um, existing plant in those regions that is more strong than the others and um, stays alive during winter supposedly I don't know if this is mythology or if this is something that really exists so I'm sorry my ignorance but if you can explain it to me please let me know in the comments and then another one that I really enjoy was The Legend of the Christmas Rose by Selma Lagerlof so in here we have priests that are in priests in the village and one of them has uh, a garden with plants and herbs and flowers that he take, take, takes care of that are really rare he, he, he voyages to get those plants and those flowers for, to plant in his garden and outside of society there's a couple a family with so a wife and a husband and children that live outside of the city because the man is a thief so he was expelled from the town and they live in a cave in the forest and one day the woman how is she called Hover mother so Hover mother come to the city and she peruses through the city like she's in charge she doesn't care so they don't abide by the rules of society in those times so they they are outcasts but they live as who cares i don't you know that that type of vibe and hover mother uh, because one of her children uh, saw a passage to the garden of this priest calls her and she goes and goes to see the garden and she is perusing there and when the priest sees her well they have a bit of a discussion on why she was there and so on but eventually he asks her what she thinks about his garden and she kind of says that that's not that garden is not is nothing special that she has seen so much more beautiful flowers than those that he has in his garden and she talks about the time in um during christmas day when in the cave where they live it comes a light that makes everything around them splendorous and the flowers are unique and so beautiful more beautiful than anything you can imagine and this priest wants to see that because he has heard the legend and he asks uh, our mother to go with her in the Christmas day to see those flowers and in the between he's trying to argue with the bishop to pardon that family and br bring them back to the town and live in society but the um, the bishop i think the bishop says if he can bring him a flower from that says astonishing 
uh, garden that appears in Christmas Day and can show it to him, he will pardon that family. And so the priest goes in Christmas Day and he sees the beautiful uh, flowers, but then something happens because all along the priest is being accompanied by uh, a younger priest and the younger priest is not, he doesn't believe that what they are seeing is the work of God. He thinks that is the work of the devil because in his mind, in his logic, how can a family of thieves having been presented to this magnificent garden and not the, the people who praise the God. And then something happens, but eventually everything will go well, but that's something that happens in this middle. But I, I really enjoy this story and it talks about, again, the Christmas rose. That's something that I, I thought it was curious. Um, and well, I could, I could have done some research about it, but maybe I sh I, later I will do the research. But in the meantime, if you, if you know the, this, this story about the Christmas rose, and if you can give more information about it, I, will, I really appreciate it. And if you want to share your own Christmas traditions and or some Christmas stories that are told, even if they aren't written, but, you know, are stories that are told from generation to generation and sometimes are never written. So perhaps you have one of those stories. So if you wanted to share with us, please write in the comments and let us know. But yeah, well, in overall, some of these stories that are in here made this read enjoyable. But I talked to you about three and those were the three that I most enjoyed. Because this has... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen stories. So there we go. If if this for you sounded compelling type of stories, and if you want to read for yourself, I, I of course I really advise that. And, but, you know, f f compared to my experience and what I told in this video, if this is something that you want to pick up, because it's, it's like if you, like me, were expecting more fairy tale or more mythological or more uh, legends, or stuff like that, that's not really what you are going to take in here. There are some that are more reflexive, something, some, some of them are more, well, yes, a bit of old school, like meaning um, old legends and old myths, yes, but few of those. And I was expecting the other way around, so that's why I was a bit, mm, okay, you know, but okay. Let me know um, if you have recommendations for Christmas readings. What do you usually read in this time of year? If you do thematic readings, perhaps you don't, who knows. But for those who do thematic reading through this season and expecting Christmas and even after Christmas, please let me know what you recommend. Perhaps I will, I will join, join them to my wish list and 
bring them in um, ne in the next year or the years after that. So please let me know. I I will really I'm really curious about it. So yeah, this is my review. Again, not so positive, but not every time it can be positive, right? <laughs> Eventually, at some point, there's going to be some of them that, you know, that aren't, aren't going to be all that, so... But yeah, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Don't forget to press the ring bell button to all so you can be notified whenever I post. Leave a like, it helps a lot the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. And then follow me on my social, on my socials. <laughs> I will link them down below in the box description. And, uh, you know, Instagram, Twitter or X now, TikTok. I'm, I'm kind of um, perusing my way in TikTok and uh, X, so stand with me and give me time to produce more content, I'm going to try to, but go follow me on those and I see you at the next video, bye!